They begin by handing you this particular quadratic. Can you read it for me? Because I actually can't see with the reflection. It's x squared x squared minus 4x plus 2 equals 0. Thank you. So here is an equation. It's a quadratic just like before. Now notice this, right? They say if alpha and beta are the uh, solutions to this, if alpha and beta. Now I could work out with the quadratic formula what alpha and beta are equal to. But the whole point of these guys here is that I do not need to. I don't need to work out what they are to do any of these results. I just need to identify what's A, what's B, what's C. So let's do it. What's A? You can get it right from here. One. Careful. One. A is just the number in front of x squared, which is 1. Okay. How about B? It's minus 4. This is really important. It's easy to forget that that sign is there, but the sign makes a big difference. So I'm going to write that down. B is negative 4. And then lastly, C is 2. Very good. This is all I need. Let's have a go at actually doing what it is they've asked. I think the first one is alpha plus beta, isn't it? Okay. Now I'm going to use these results that I've proved two ways, right? I don't have to work out what alpha and beta are. If I want to know what happens when I add them, I could just go straight here. Okay. So I'm going to write minus b over a. I'm going to encourage you, as we always do when you learn a new formula, write down the formula itself to get it into your brain. And then I'm going to look at what b is. And what A is, do a substitution. Minus, what's B? What did we say it was? Four. It's negative 4, so yep, I've got two negatives there, which I will cancel in a second. Bless you. And then I'm dividing through by A, which in this case is conveniently 1. That's nice. So I just get an answer of 4. Bam, done. No quadratic formula, no factorization. I just went straight there. Okay? That was the first one. I'm pretty sure the second one is just asking for the product, right? Alpha times beta. Okay, just like before, because this is new. I'm going to write down the formula, which is equal to C over A, just to get it in my brain. And I know what C is, and I know what A is. So I'm going to do the substitution. It's going to be 2 over 1. I know that you know what 2 over 1 is equal to, but I encourage you, as always, do the substitution step and don't skip it, because then it shows you know what you're doing. And then lastly, I just evaluate that. Again, no factorization, no quadratic formula. I just went straight there. Okay. Where it starts to get a little more interesting is when you look at you know, something like C. I'm just going to put an extra column here. What's C asking for? Have a look at it, right? It looks like this weird, complicated, messy thing. You're like, what? Alpha squared beta plus, is it alpha beta squared? Yeah. Alpha beta squared. You're like, oh, gross. What? How am I supposed to work that out? Ah, now, here's the thing, right? Everything you can see on the other parts, we're going to unpack them, right? Everything you can see, it's like Lego, and you only ever need these two pieces. You can construct everything else just from these basic building blocks, right? How could I write this in terms of what I already know? Can anyone tell me something I could do to make that a little easier to write? What can I do with this? <laughs> alpha and the other one. I'm going to factorize, exactly right, that's the key thing, right? We call this Greek letter alpha, we call this Greek letter when you put a tail on the B, it's a beta, okay? Um, or beta, I, who knows? Beta, beta, anyway. I'm going to factorize out both of them, so let's go. I write that out the front. Here come my brackets. What's left in the first case? Alpha. And then what's left in the second case? Beta. And I know what both of those, I've, I've already calculated them. Right? So I'm going to write them just like I saw before. That's 2 and that's 4. You okay with that? Does that make sense? That's 8. Now, have a look. You've got a few other ones here. I'm going to let you have a go at D, E, and F without me holding your hand. Remember the key is these two building blocks here, right? You can use them to construct everything, okay? So go all Lego Movie Master Builder on it. See what you can come up with. And if you want some confirmation or you're hitting against the, your head against the wall, let us know and we'll see if we can help you out. We don't have much time, so let's use it well. Here's part D. And hopefully the astute among you have noticed that just like with C, and your instinct was, I know algebra, I can factorize this, which helped us out. Your instinct when dealing with two fractions that have different denominators is you should get a common denominator, right? That's, that's the only way you really have to deal with these fractions of different denominators. What would be the common denominator for two fractions like this? Alpha, beta, right? Watch. I'm going to turn this guy into something with a denominator 
of alpha beta? It'd be beta on alpha beta, right? I've just multiplied the top and bottom by beta. What about the next one? Alpha and alpha beta, very good. Once you've got this, you're pretty much there, aren't you? Because you can combine these two fractions now that they're on a common denominator. Alpha plus beta on the top, alpha beta on the bottom, and off you go. You know what alpha plus beta is. You know what alpha times beta is, and then you've got some answers. Okay. Now, just lastly, before I, oh yeah, did you want to ask a question, Nishan? You know how say in the at the end we write alpha plus beta equals minus b over a. Yep. Sorry, a over minus b. Reciprocal the. A over minus b. We just reciprocal the. Well, oh, I see what you mean. Uh, no, because that would be that would be this, which is not this. Do you agree? They're different things. Okay. Uh, year 11, stay with me. Shh, 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 shh. This next one, right? Actually, sorry, I'm going to skip over E because I think you can work it out without my help. F is a little bit sneakier, right? When you have a think about, this is what you've got, right? Am I, have I got F? This is F? Yep. When you look at this, some of you might be thinking, oh, two squares. D difference of squares? Why can't I use difference of squares in this case? Because it's not a difference, it's a sum, right? You've got a plus. You can't just say, it would be more convenient to me if I had a minus there. It's not, right? So here's what I have to do. And I'm going to write this in a little bit of a different color underneath so you can see I'm doing a slightly different line of reasoning. I've got squares here. Right? I've got squares here. And I said before, these are the only building blocks you've got and they're the only building blocks you need. So if I've got squares here and neither of those have squares in them, then it stands to reason I'm going to have to square one of these, right, in order to get something that looks vaguely like this. Okay? Now, hopefully, at least by trial and error, you've only got two choices, right? 50-50 chance. You realize that this is going to be more useful to you because the alpha and beta are already separated. What do you get when you just expand this? Alpha squared. Sorry, if you get the number, it will be 4 squared, but I'm actually interested in the algebra, right? Alpha squared plus 2 alpha beta plus b squared. Now, is this thing here, what I've written in orange, is this what I wanted? It's not, but it's close, isn't it? It's close. I just have an extra thing, right? So if I subtracted it from this side, I would have what I wanted. You can't just subtract things from one side of an equation. You have to subtract from both sides of the equation. So I'm going to do this as well. Okay, this guy here will be, these guys are going to cancel, that's the thing that I wanted, right? And this you can calculate. 